This is Joshua Fitzpatrick with AWC. Today I'm going to be doing an overview of the Semantic G120 Smart Access Module. All right, let's start by plugging it into our G120 that's powered up. And then let's look for the Smart Access Module via our Wi-Fi. So it should show up with the MAC address of the model itself. So you're going to click here on the G120 Smart Access, and the initial password is going to be 12345678. Then you're going to say OK. Once it's connected up to the unit, you're going to want to go to a internet browser, and you're going to want to type in 192.168.1.1. That will connect you to your Smart Access, and then once it comes up, you're going to need to type in a new password. This is for security reasons, so it makes you change it. So I'm just going to change it to my company, AWC-1965, year that we started. And then I'm going to say OK. So at this point, your smart access is going to restart, and then it's going to be a new password, not 1234567.8. So the easiest way is just go down to your wireless and either forget the network or you just right click on it and go to properties and then change your password here to now my new password or whatever you put yours to. So now to say okay and now it should reconnect connecting and then once I press refresh on this browser I am now connected up to my smart access point. Now, with this smart access, it will only let you connect one device at a time. So just keep that in mind that only one person can go on it at a time. All right, let's start with quick commissioning. Do you want to factory reset it or modify existing settings? Today I'm going to reset the factory settings so I can revert the drive back to factory settings. You can either do standard drive control, dynamic drive control, or expert. I'll just go with the, uh, you can look at the expert by clicking here, and then you see this little arrow on the right side. You click that, and you could choose any of these types. So let's go back. So let's just go to standard control. Another thing, let's look around the menu. So right now, if you look on this left side, you could drop this out, and you could choose one of these things to go amongst the quick commissioning. You can see what's going on with the drive right now. It's set up for P10, so it's right now in quick commissioning mode. Um, it's a CU320P-2PN. Um, there's two alarms going on, so right now if you were to click it, it would bring you to the alarms. But right now I'm doing the quick commissioning, so I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to abort. So let's continue on. Uh, also, there's the uh, factory reset right there at the bottom. And then there's an info button right here, which talks about what's going on on the drive itself. CU230P-2PN, and it says the firmware and everything on it. All right, so let's continue. Let's say next. My supply voltage is going to be 220 because I'm on a demo unit. I have an IEC 50 hertz, and I am going to manually enter in the parameters. So I'm going to click on my amps, and it's going to be 0.97. My KW is going to be 0.18. My RPMs is going to be 1350. My voltage is going to be 230. Hertz is going to be 50. And then if you click this little arrow, it'll show you what your cooling is. And mine is a natural vent. So just say OK. And then say Next. And now this is your I.O. configuration. So typically your your 700, but now since it's G120, we have changed to macros. So we will choose one of these macros to choose from, and you could drop them down, and then they'll give you a description of what it actually inclines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the number 7 and just keep it there, and then just say OK. And then I'm going to say Next. And then this is your minimum speed, maximum speed, seconds up, seconds down, 
ramp down time, and I don't want it to be zero. I'd rather that be one. So it at least has a little bit of time before it shuts down. And then there's a current limit. Say next. Do you want linear or parabolic character? I want linear because it's volts per hertz. And do I want to start a motor ID at a standstill, rotating? You can choose any of the motor ID runs from this menu. Complete quick commissioning. And then now it will give you a go to jog page and or complete quick commissioning. So I want to go to jog page so I can do the uh, motor ID run. So now I'll get control down at the bottom right. Say OK. Go to hand. Click start. And then you should see your amps go up and your motor will tune at a standstill. And at this point, I should be able to give it a stop and then a start. And then guess what? My motor goes up to full RPMs. All right, let me stop this. And I'm going to free up the control so we can go over the rest of the buttons. So you have to stop it before you can free up the controls. Say OK. And now let's press this up arrow. Or you could click here, and it can go amongst these. But I like working from the main menu, so I'm just going to press up. So you can go to your parameter view. And then you can look at all your parameters. Or say if you want to just, you know a certain parameter, like 971 is our save parameter. So 971, which is our RAM to ROM, press Enter you can go straight to it. Or you can filter it, or what? It, you can set up your own user parameter list by just checkboxing these after you press that little plus sign. And then we can filter out. Those three that I click, those are my parameters. So see, I checkbox those, those are there. The other thing that we can do is go to commissioning or any of these items, or like inputs, outputs, digital inputs. So there's multiple things that the Smart Axis gets you. So let's go back. This was that original view that we went to when we started the drive. It's called the Jog View. And then Monitoring. This will just show your main stuff about the drive itself. Set point, output, output voltage, all that stuff. Uh, diagnostics, this is a really good one. This is going to be good for your troubleshooting guys. So this will get you your faults. So right now we have no cyclic data happening because there's not a Profinet device talking to this thing. So it's saying uh, we don't see any communication. So you can acknowledge faults down at the bottom right if there was an issue. You can click this middle dot, which will bring you to your analog inputs, your analog outputs, and your digital inputs. So if any of those were on, you would see them, like this DO. This r far right dot, is your status words. So it'll show you if you have a 47E and what it, what offs are missing, more or less. All right, let's go to the backup and restore. This first dot is the, the backup file. So it automatically gives you a date, and then you can just label it to what you want. So I'm just going to put AWC on it, and then I'm going to press backup. Now, when you do a backup, you can hold up to 20 backups on the Smart Access module. After you're done backing up the, to the module, it will ask you if you want to download the file to save it locally on your host machine. And you can either press Download to save it to your local machine, or you can say OK. I'm going to say OK. The second dot is the Restore. So that bin file that I just downloaded to the Smart Access point is now available for me to download, or say if I were to send it, send this file to someone and I got a .bin file, I can upload an existing file. And then you can just press restore. And this will put the parameters from the bin file into the drive now. Now it will say, do you want to save the parameter settings to the non-volatile memory cell RAM to ROM? I'm going to just say yes. So now I'll do a RAM to ROM function. Okay. Now the third dot, this one's this one you can save the parameter list as a .xml file so that you may view it. So say if your technician just needs to know what you put into a drive, you can send them this XML file which will have a parameter list with all the values that you've put into it. This is just for viewing and seeing the parameters and then you can save it offline if you want to. So I could generate an XML file 
and it will save locally on the Smart Access module up to 20 of them. Now you can press Download, or you just press OK. Uh, download will actually let you download the XML file so you can see all the parameters. So parameter 3, it was set to a 3 from this last configuration. And it will just show you every parameter that's in the drive and what value it was. And if you just press OK, you can see that it saved it .xml. And I could send that file to a customer or to another employee. The fourth dot, it lets you save save the parameter, the ROM memory, to an SD card. So right now I'm going to plug in a SD card. And then I can now save the ROM memory to the SD card. And then you can save up to 100 files, 1 to 100. So if I choose it to save from 1 onto the SD card, I just have to write that down that this was a configuration that I want for this drive. And when I put it into a second drive, that's probably the exact same, I can just load it from that file and say OK. The other thing that you can do is press this Safe Remove, which will let you remove the SD card without messing up the flash memory. All right, that's my overview of the Smart Access G120. Thanks for watching.